Welcome back. So last time we discussed how the transfer function G is essentially the Laplace transform of our state space system. And it's a complex valued uh, function. So this G lives in the, so the, the, the variable S, so this is G of S, and S lives in the complex plane, okay? And essentially, if I plug in I omega into G of S, so G of I omega, tells me what the system does if I give it a pure tone forcing in an I omega frequency. So sine omega t in gives me A sine omega t plus phi out. This is just a true fact for all linear systems. If I plug an input sine wave into my system, I get an output sine wave of the same frequency, but it might have a different magnitude and phase. And so the transfer function, if I evaluate G at I omega, so this is like a sine wave um, in the complex plane, the magnitude of G I omega is the amplitude of my output sine wave, and angle of G I omega is the phase of my output sine wave. And so what I want to do is illustrate what this means physically for something like the spring mass damper system. Okay, so I'm going to draw um, the trusty old spring mass damper. Okay, I've got a spring, I've got a damper, and attached to that is some mass m. Okay, we're going to say, you know, this is some spring constant k, some damper d, and the position of the system x is essentially how uh, far this mass is from rest. Okay, so this is relatively easy to derive the equations of motion, um, just kind of Newton's law uh, for the spring mass system. You get something like x double dot, let's say m x double dot. Okay, this is my uh, force, or my, sorry, mass times acceleration equals force. And so there's a minus k x and a minus d x dot. So if I bring them over to the left side, I get a plus dx dot plus kx equals whatever external forcing I put on the system. So any leftover forces, like if I am moving the base or if I have, you know, something, if I hit this with a hammer, those all go into my forcing u. Okay, so a really simple Newton's law here. And we know that if I wanted to, I could build an augmented system, I could build a state space system by introducing x and x dot as states of the system. But what we're going to do um, now is essentially look at the Laplace transform of this, uh, this system, and then we're going to build something called the frequency response or the Bode plot. Okay? Um, and so just recall that if I take uh, the Laplace transform of the derivative of ddx, uh, sorry, ddt of x, if I take the Laplace transform of x dot, I just get uh, S times the Laplace transform of X minus X naught, okay? Um, and so what we're going to do, usually in transfer function land in Laplace transform world, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that all of the initial conditions and transients die out, and so we're only going to consider uh, this term here. We're going to assume that x naught and x dot naught are all zero, so no initial conditions. But you don't have to do that. You could use these to solve for the, the initial condition response. So we're going to use this uh, for x zero equals zero. And then what we also have, if we run this through again, we get uh, the Laplace transform of d squared dtx equals s squared times the Laplace transform of my variable x. And this is really nice because I'm taking differential equations, derivatives, and I'm turning them into just algebraic terms, products of s squareds and stuff. So let's say I plug some real numbers in here. I just have a certain mass and a certain damping constant and, and certain spring. So I'm just going to plug in numbers here. I'm going to say, let's say my system is x double dot, um, let's say plus x dot plus x. I'm going to keep it real simple. All of my constants are 1 and that equals u, okay? Now, we know how to solve this ODE in general, right? I could plug in e to the lambda t, and I would get uh, lambda squared plus lambda plus 1 
e to the lambda t, and I would get my characteristic polynomial. If I plug in these terms, if I take the Laplace transform of both sides and I plug in these formulas, I get something very similar to my characteristic polynomial. So what I get is s squared x bar plus s x bar plus x bar equals u bar. Now remember, bar just means I'm in the Laplace transform domain. I've Laplace transformed that function of time into a function of s, my Laplace variable. And now I can factor out on both sides my s squared plus s plus 1 times x bar equals u bar. Okay, so this is pretty, pretty simple. Um, this is my characteristic polynomial. So the roots of this function are the eigenvalues of my system. They're the, the e to the lambda t's uh, that, that solve the system. And so finally, I can say x bar over u bar equals 1 over s squared plus s plus 1. And this is my transfer function g of s. This is how you get it. Super simple. Okay, You Laplace transform your ODE, and you essentially rearrange and collect like variables, so you get your x bars and your u bars on one side, and then you can write this transfer function from u. In this case, I'm measuring x, so y equals x. And so my transfer function from u to x is this uh, 1 over my characteristic polynomial. And that's generally the case in these simple linear systems. Okay? Now, we're going to use this to actually figure out this a and this phi uh, function here. Okay? So I could literally take this complex function and I could plug in i omega for all omegas, for all frequencies, and I could compute the magnitude and the phase. And that would tell me what the output signs look like given an input sign. But I like to actually do this with an experiment. Okay? So here I have my trusty, ooh, maybe black was the wrong color for this room. Um, so I have my trusty spring uh, mass damper system. Okay, you can kind of see it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to force the system at different frequencies. And in fact, I'm going to make what's called a frequency response. Okay, so I'm going to build this frequency response. Let's do it right here. Okay, I'm going to plot A and phi. Remember, A is just um, magnitude of G i omega, and this is phase of G i omega. And I'm going to plot this as a function of omega, as a function of how um, fast I'm whipping this thing up and down, how fast I'm forcing this u equals sine omega t. Okay, and a couple of important things. U, omega is going to be on a log scale, so these are really low frequencies over here, really high frequencies over here. A is also going to be on a log scale, so negative uh, means really, really small amplitude, positive means really, really big amplitude. Okay, and so let's, let's start doing this. So this is an example I always do in my class. I really hope you can see uh, this phone. Okay, so if I move my hand, if I move my forcing omega really slow, so I have a slow sine wave, what does the phone amplitude do? What is the measurement of this phone's position? Well, it's a sine wave that exactly tracks the input sine wave. Okay, so the amplitude is 1 and the phase is zero, okay? So let's write that down. So for really low frequencies, I have an amplitude essentially of one, and I have a phase that's zero. And if I, if I make this thing arbitrarily slow, it'll have the same behavior. The output will track exactly the input. If I put in an input sine wave, the output sine will be exactly the same with a equals one and phi equals zero. Okay, this is zero degrees, and that's amplitude one. So now, let's say that I take this thing and I go to ultra, ultra um, high frequencies. Okay, this is a little harder to do, but I'll try and it might be harder to see. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to whip the, my hand up and down really, really fast. So I'm moving my hand really, 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 really fast. And you can see, I mean, this thing has an oscillating mode out of plane, 
but it's not moving up and down. If I move my hand really, 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 really fast, this thing basically stays put. And the faster I move my hand, the lower the amplitude goes. So this A gets smaller and smaller and smaller the faster omega is. So asymptotically, there's kind of this, this will go down to zero amplitude. And it's hard to figure out exactly what the phase is just from watching it. But if I plugged in really high frequency omega into here, I would find out that I picked up a minus 180 degrees out of phase. So it turns out that I'll be minus 180 degrees out of phase asymptotically. Now in the middle, this is where it's really interesting. Okay, so for example, in the middle, there's some sweet spot frequency. Let's see if I can do this, where there's some sweet spot where if I move my hand a little, I can get this thing really jumping. Can you see that? Like, yeah, this phone is, I'm moving my hand just barely, but I'm making the phone jump a lot. Maybe I'll bring my marker here. So let's do it again. Okay, so I'm moving my hand a little. Oh, this is almost impossible, two hands. But the amplitude is going huge, okay? So there is some sweet spot frequency, the resonant frequency. There's some resonant frequency where this amplitude actually goes up. So where A is actually bigger than one, I put in a little sine omega t, I get a big sine omega t out. And at that point, I pass through uh, minus 90 degrees of phase. So if you noticed, when I do that, it's a little hard to make it exaggerated, but as my hand is moving up and down and I'm making this thing jump, the phone is going in the opposite direction of my hand. Okay, so they're approaching and then they're diverging, approaching, diverging. So the phone is minus 90 degrees out of phase with my hand. Okay, so this is called, this is a super useful plot. This is called the Bode plot after uh, a guy named Bode, or it's also called the frequency response. And this very, very simple picture essentially tells me everything about what my system does at all frequencies. So if I have something complicated like the Hubble Space Telescope or the International Space Station, I might want to look at the Bode plot to see how does this thing going to oscillate? Where are its resonant peaks? What do I have to actively control to make this thing not uh, shake itself into pieces? Okay, and this is one of the reasons the transfer function is so useful is because if I have a transfer function, I can literally plug in I omega and sweep through omega and the magnitude and phase of this function can give me all of this information. So very, very useful. Um, the last thing I'm going to show you is actually, this is really simple to do in MATLAB. Okay, so let's do this in MATLAB. Let's say, um, First things first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define S equals TF of S. So this is how you start in MATLAB if you want to do transfer functions. You say, I'm going to define a Laplace variable, and it's a transfer function of the Laplace variable. Otherwise, S could be anything. S could be um, a number or a script or something like that. So let me get rid of this. Okay. Uh, so the first thing I have to do is define my Laplace variable. Then I'm going to build my system, my, my G. I'm going to say G equals 1 over, and I think I had S squared plus S plus 1. Okay, That's my transfer function. That's all it is. I hit enter. Okay, I have a continuous time transfer function called G. So now this is where it gets really cool. In MATLAB, I can compute the Bode plot really, really easily. It's one line. I say Bode of G. And what it's going to do is essentially it sweeps through all of omega. This is frequency omega in radians per second. So it's going to sweep through all of these frequencies and it's going to evaluate G I omega and compute its magnitude and its phase. And you can see here's the magnitude in log plot in decibels. And just like what we predicted, for very low frequencies, the output um, has 0 dB, so log of um, 1 is 0. So the amplitude is 1, meaning that the sine wave is exactly the same as the input sine wave, and the phase is 0. As I increase the forcing frequency, and you can probably see this now against uh, or behind the white background, as I increase the forcing frequency, I hit this resonant peak here, where the telephone is jumping. And then for really, really, really high frequencies, my amplitude 
decays. So if I move my hand a lot, the phone doesn't move hardly at all. OK? And so this is really easy one line in MATLAB, just Bode of G. And you sweep through this whole uh, frequency response curve for this system. Now, if I had a system that had a lot more damping, so if this term, if my x dot term was a lot higher, then maybe this thing wouldn't oscillate so much. Maybe it would die out quickly and not have a resonant peak. Or if I made this damping much, much smaller, maybe I could make my resonant peak much, much bigger. Okay, so if I make my damping smaller, 10 times smaller, now I've got this, let me move it over here. Now I've got this monster resonant peak here because I have such small damping. If I force this thing a little, it's really going to whip wildly around. Okay, so I got this big resonant peak. All I did was decrease damping. Okay, so this also fits our intuition. It makes sense. Um, and if I increase the damping a lot, so let's say I make this 10 times bigger than my original damping, I should completely get rid of my, uh, my resonant peak. Oof. And in fact, something weird happened because I made it, I made it too big. Um, I could probably go 4. Let's, that's probably a good one. Okay. Um, other cool things you can do once you have a transfer function in MATLAB, I can compute the impulse response. I can compute the step response. So let's do that. So let's uh, redefine my G to be the original G. And let's just type in impulse of G. So now what you see is, if I, this is if I had my system and I whacked it with a hammer, the position will increase, then overshoot and oscillate, and eventually go back to rest. But it's going to do it by oscillating back to rest. And that's what this impulse response tells me. OK, so that's literally if I took this system and I whack it with a hammer. OK. Now if I do a step response, Let's do that. If I have a step response, see now it goes from 0 to 1, and it oscillates while it does it. So that's if I take this system, and instead of just whacking it once, I give it like a constant offset function. So I force it forever at some value. So I step my control from 0 to 1. That's kind of like if I jump this thing down. So notice I just drop my control. It oscillates, and it ends up at a different steady state value. So now its position is 1, where it used to be 0. OK, so lots you can do with uh, Laplace transform transfer functions. They tell you how the input sine waves turn into output sine waves. They give you the amplitude and the phase just by evaluating g at i omega. Really easy to code up in MATLAB, easy to compute from an ODE. Um, and then what we're going to find is that looking at properties of, let me bring up the Bode plot, by looking at properties of this frequency response plot, we'll be able to tell, is our system uh, robust? Is it not robust? Where is it sensitive? Um, what kind of disturbances can it uh, reject? What kind of noise is it sensitive to? We're going to be able to get all of that intuitively from these, these frequency response plots. And that's all coming up. Thank you.